Hi, and welcome to Weld.com. I'm Chris King. I'm the Director of Skill Training for Campbellsville University. We're here today at the Skill Training Center in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Uh, we had a request from Instagram for us to demonstrate a lap joint. So we're going to do a simple lap joint with a 7018 electrode and show you a little bit about the setup and tell you about the rod angles, the correct rod angles to use and uh, some of the other technical aspects of running a lap joint. Now, running a lap joint may seem simple to a lot of people, but remember, we were all new, new welders at one point. So what we're gonna do is just show you the technical aspects of running a lap joint. We're gonna demonstrate that. And then I'm gonna demonstrate what not to do. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna run some welds uh, with my rod angle in, in, that's incorrect, too far up, too far down. We'll talk about work angle, travel angle, and so on and so forth. So today I'm going to be using the Bowler D7018 8th inch and we'll be using the Lincoln Electric Power Wave 300C as my power source. Um, I have some lap joint material here already prepped and I have the table prepped. Notice my work clamp is hooked directly to the table. Um, if you can get the, the work clamp hooked directly to your work that you're working on that's great that's going to save you a lot of trouble a lot of issues uh, later on but since we're working on a six inch lap joint uh, we're probably not going to be able to get that ground clamp right directly on it so what we're going to do is clean the table and i've ground the table your grounder is going to be your best friend uh, when you're trying to learn how to weld uh, i cleaned the table really well got a really good connection with the work plan you'll also notice that i have my work piece clean so I grind these up, make them as clean as you can, get rid of all the mill scale, rust, anything that could affect your weld, you want to get rid of. You don't want to have that on there when you're trying to when you're trying to weld two pieces of metal together. Whether you're just learning to weld or whether you've been welding for years, that's good practice. Make sure you're welding on clean material. The welding rods were designed to weld on clean material. Yes, some of them will burn through rust. Yes, some of them will do this, that, and the other. But if you can give yourself the best opportunity to run a good weld, make sure that you clean your weld, make sure you clean your plates off. Don't try to weld through that junk if, it's, if you don't have to. It's completely unnecessary. So what we're going to do today, let's, let's just start off running some weld. I've got my lap joint set up here. I am going to get my welding helmet on. Notice I'm wearing safety glasses on my safety gear. Safety first, always when you're welding because you will find a way to get cut or burnt if you don't. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate here. I'm going to run this particular joint. I'm gonna weld this one with my, with my work angle just a little bit too high. Because I want you to see the difference in what uh, in, in what that makes and how that that weld lays in there. You can still make a beautiful weld with your work angle not correct, but uh, it's not going to be in the right place. It is just as important to put the weld in the right place as it is to run a good solid weld. So I'm going to I'm going to raise my work angle up just a little bit. We'll take a look at it when I get done. Clean it off and see what we need to do.
And also, when you're cleaning the weld off, there's no need to beat it with the death. You don't need to come down on that weld and beat the weld to death with the chipping hammer. If it's stuck on there, tap it along with the toe on the bottom or tap it along with the toe on the top and rake it. And that should be sufficient to get your slide out. And then take a bright wire brush and brush it off really good. Now you can see we got a pretty good looking weld there, but I want to show you why that was wrong. And then we're going to do a dry run and I'll explain that a little bit for me once I show you what we're talking about. What I'm looking for if a student or if I'm inspecting something, what I'm looking for is the, not only the uniformity of the weld, but I'm looking for weld placement. And that's what we're demonstrating here. Now on this lap joint, what you want to end up with is you want to end up with a 45 degree angle between your bottom plate and your top plate. Now my work angle was raised up just a little bit too much. So as you can notice from the profile of this, you're going to notice that there's a lot more weld on that bottom plate than there is on the top plate. The weld's kind of laying flat on it. Now it's a really good looking weld, but we don't have enough filler metal on that top plate to be sufficient uh, for what we're trying to accomplish. So let's talk about work angles just a little bit. Let's see if we can come back and correct that, and we may overcorrect it. So let's, let's see what happens. So what is work angle? Work angle is your angle up and down between the joint. Your travel angle is how far you've got it one way or the other, the travel angle is in the direction of the travel of your welding rod. So this is your work angle. This is what we're talking about right now. And on that particular joint, instead of having this put in here at a 45 degree angle, that would have given me a nice 45 degree profile out here on either end. You could look at it and see that that weld was laying in at a 45 degree angle. But what I did on that one on purpose is I extended my work angle up and ran it like this instead of like this. So what that did was that put a lot more weld on that bottom plate and not enough on the top plate. Uh, it's extremely important to try to maintain that 45 degree angle all the way down. And do a dry run. Make sure your work clamp is not hooked up. Uh, put your rod in your stinger and do a dry run. And make sure that you can make it all the way across that plate without having to stop and wiggle and readjust. Give yourself every chance to make a really good weld. So I'm gonna get ready here and we're gonna run one the other one. So I'm going to drop that work angle down a little bit too far and kind of show you what that looks like. Now a six inch lap joint, which is what this is, three eighths material, 836 mild steel. I'm probably not going to run these in industry a whole lot, but what this joint does, this is a nice little fill it well to practice on because a lot of what you're going to do in the welding industry is going to be fillet welds. You're going to be welding in a T-joint configuration or you'll be welding in a lap joint configuration. And it may be 10 feet long or maybe 60 feet long. It may not look exactly like this piece, but when you're learning how to weld, this is a great way to learn how to weld. Make them at least six inches long. And, uh, and once you get experience, make them eight, 10, 12 inches long. That way you have starts and stops and you have to learn how to correctly start and stop your weld. That's, that's a completely different video, a different topic. We won't get into that today. But uh, we're just talking about how to properly run this, run this T-joint. So I'm going I'm to drop this work angle just a little bit. I'm going to drop it down, and I'm going to put a little too much uh, filler rod on that top plate just to kind of show you. I want you to be able to see what it looks like when it's wrong. So in order to do this, I'm going to change the angle of my electrode. It makes it a little easier on me to put my electrode in like this so I don't have to bend my wrist so far to get that wrong angle. I'm actually purposely doing this incorrectly. All right, so here we go.
Now, one thing you'll notice as you gain experience, I've been welding for 31 years. I'm a certified welding inspector. I've been around the welding industry a long time. I've been in welding education for 16 years. Um, it's hard for me to purposely mess up a weld. So subconsciously, I can go in and keep that rod at a 45 degree angle, and it's just because of experience. It has nothing to do with skill. It's just years and years and years of practice. Um, and you'll notice that the more experience you get doing it correctly, that's why it's so important to not develop bad habits. So make sure that your rod angles are correct. Make sure that your work angle, your travel angle, your arc length, uh, make sure all of that is correct and you're learning how to do it the right way so you don't get into bad habits. That way you'll notice when something's off. Like when I was running that well, that's only a six inch well, but I had to purposely make myself drop that angle and to make sure I had to consciously think about dropping that angle to make sure that I was doing it so I could show you what it looks like uh, when, you're, when, you're tr when your work angle is dropped down too low. So let's check the slide off and see what we end up with. All right, let's check out the well profile and see what we got. I really should have got two pair of clamps. So I do not have to adjust these every single time. Nobody wants to know how to use a pair of clamps. All right, so let's look at the profile. So if you look at the profile of this particular well, there is too much well material on that top plate and not enough on the bottom plate. So it's kind of stood up like this. That's due to my work angle being incorrect. I have had my rod drop too low, and that's uh, wherever you aim that rod, that's where that filler rod's gonna go. So we have, uh, we have more weld than we need on the top of that plate, so we needed to make some corrections. Now let's see if we can weld one rock. We've messed too many up on purpose. Let's see if we can do one with the correct angles. And you can adjust this rod. Once you start learning how to weld, you can adjust this rod however you want to. There's multiple ways to adjust this rod. I probably wouldn't run a horizontal lap joint like this. You can, but I probably wouldn't do that. If you can put this rod in here, it'll set at a 45 degree angle. It'll set straight up and down. It'll set at a 90 degree angle, whatever. So I'm gonna run this one like this. We'll run it at a 90 degree angle. And we'll see what we end up with. Yeah, look at that. I haven't even touched it yet. It's chipping itself. That weld's so good, it's chipping itself. Let's clean this one up, see what happens. I did forget to mention 
Well, now I'm running this at 130 amps, which is right in the middle of the range of an eighth, eighth inch 7018. You want to run them as hot as you can stand them. That's my theory. You get really good penetration. So the well profile on that particular plate should be at a good 45 degree angle. I feel like I got my rod angle right. This from experience, it felt good, but let's take a look at it and see. So what I'm going to do as an inspector, as an instructor, is I'm going to pick it up, close one eye and look at it, look at the profile of that weld. If you look right down that weld, look down the profile of it, you're going to see that that's setting at a 45 degree angle. So that's the right amount of filler rod for the top plate versus the bottom plate. That's what we're looking for in a good lap joint.